had the privilege to read this incredible book, and I do have to share with you that, um, you know, when the Lord gives us the capacity and the ability to develop wealth in our lives, that truly, um, how we steward that wealth is so incredibly important. One of the things that I found that I love most about Nate's book is its ability to be so practical in advice. Um, you know, a lot of books like this generally can be a little bit intimidating, especially for women to read if we get into dollars and cents. But I loved reading it because Nate tells a story all throughout, woven throughout his life and his experience in giving great wisdom and great advice on not only how to generate wealth, but how to protect that wealth, how to invest that wealth, how to save that wealth, and how to use that wealth to make a difference in the world. This is a great read, an absolute must for 2017. Hey, good morning, friends. Uh, my name is Kim Bynum, and I posted on Facebook the other day something that really touched my life, and I feel so compelled to share it with you that I wanted to make this video. And I want to tell you a little bit of a story about how this has already impacted my life, and I haven't even gotten past page 12 yet. Bottom line is this. I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, and I've always heard people talk about their, their life verse and how much it means to them, and it's in their heart, and it guides them. And I was like, well, I don't have a life verse. I do my devotion every day. I read my Bible, I, I believe. And I couldn't ever find that verse, and I just kind of always had that in the back of my mind. I wasn't searching, I wasn't looking. And I'm telling you what, guys, I opened up the table of contents, and I went to, I think it's like the second chapter, and it's on leadership, and I found my life verse. And I'm telling you, it. I just read this verse, it was a, a call to leadership, and it, it struck me, it was like epiphany, it was like, aha, there, and the heavens came down. And here is my life verse, y'all, and I haven't even gotten to the meat and potatoes of this book, but I'm telling you, if you get an opportunity to read it, if you get an opportunity just to open up to one page, God's got a message for you in this book. And I highly recommend that you pick up a copy and read it. It'll change your life. I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm an inspirational teacher. Inspirational teacher. So my desire is not to get you feeling good and giving you a church service where you get the rah-rah and the amens and then you go back and then your shoulders slump down and you go, woe is me. Have you had those experiences Sunday after Sunday? <laughs> yeah. True, right? Yeah. Well, see, that's not the way it's meant to be. And so therefore, because I know that that's not what it's meant to be, I'm going to do my part in giving you the experience that I want you to have this, the next time you do go through your worship service. So that when you go into that worship service, you leave that worship service ready to go do something because you truly believe the word that was given to you. Fair enough? I promise you this, guys. That if you will lend me your ear, I'll give you my heart. Just like God spoke and created, I want you to understand that that's the power that you have right now. You have everything that you need to bring about the life that you believe you deserve. Now, if you follow with what Joseph has just now shared, we're going to get to where that belief truly is. Because we'll be able to see what actions you're taking that demonstrate what you actually believe. Right? Go ahead and have a seat, please. I'm going to ask you questions so I know whether or not I'm getting through. My process is simple as this. If I tell you, you'll forget. If I teach you, you'll remember. But if I involve you, you'll learn. Say it, if I tell you. If I tell you. If I tell you. If I tell you. You'll forget. If I teach you. You'll remember. If I involve you. You'll learn. If I tell you. You'll forget. If I teach you. You'll remember. But if I involve you. You'll learn. Does that make sense? See, one of the flaws within our education system is that it's one way. You're getting the information one way. There's nothing to, to be pulled from you to get understanding. Decisions are made 
with your mind. Thoughts lead to feelings, lead to actions, lead to results. Thoughts lead to feelings, lead to actions, lead to results. That's a framework for making sound decisions. Thoughts lead to feelings, lead to actions, lead to results. Everything about our life is a direct reflection of what our thoughts are. You want to change your life, change your thought. Change your thought. There's a process of doing it. But all you got to know is that you have the power and participating in events like this gives you the strength to then have better thoughts. Have you learned something this weekend? Uh -huh. Thus far? You yeah. have? Okay. And so that's what the situation was. So I made this decision matrix and I decided that I was going to go to the academy because I looked long term. What you've said has been fundamental to what we're trying to do. So whatever, we, whatever we're trying to accomplish, um, you've been where I've got to go. And what I understand is uh, stepping into what we were talking about, this world of ministry and preachers and doing all of this thing that uh, we can uh, chip away at the wall of uh, religion because religion stops people from being successful religion stops people from progression uh, we have gotten stuck in the box that does not allow us to experience God in the fullness of what we've been talking about there is no faith in the box faith is outside of the box wow. and so what I found out in my 20 something years of preaching is that people are afraid to be successful because they realize too much is given much is required and with that principle, they want to know in advance what's going to be required of them if God allows them to make the successfulness of what they're trying to accomplish. And so, and, and that's not how God works. We can't walk by what we already know. We got to walk by faith and see what God's going to produce down the road. We just got to believe that He is going to do the work as we walk it out. Right, right. You gave them a plan, an easy to understand plan that even in becoming uh, free, there's freedom in the gospel as well as freedom in success. Mm -hmm. And you kept it spiritual and you allowed them to understand something that is generally basic. And it's it, it, and it almost borderlines common sense. And we have made church and success and money and everything else spooky. If God don't drop it out of heaven, then it ain't for us to have. And that's not how it works. If you don't work, you don't eat. There's still principles when you come to success. If you want success, you gotta work it. If you want it, you gotta step out on the faith that causes you to go toward it. And you gotta know where you're going in your heart. I've got a plan. My treasure is in my heart, my plan's in my heart. It's all mixed together, now I'm going for it. Well, the world will apply God's principles. Law of attraction. You heard that law of attraction? <laughs> uh, uh, why would they apply God's principles in their life and reap the harvest, yet people of the body will not apply those principles? Huh? <clears throat> See, principles don't, don't, my, it don't, you don't have to be a believer to have a principle, to, to follow a principle. Principles just stand alone. Principles work for everybody. Right? Law of gravity, it works for everybody. That right there, my friends, is what I want you to walk away with. I want you to understand, I want you to walk away with that conviction that you have everything that you need. You already have it, you already have it. Life is rich, it's foundationally built on Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all things thereafter shall be. Finances are not a one-time shot, it's a constant rolling income. To do what you have to do. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. One of the key anointings that was in this conference was Brother Nate Scott. I suggest you see him or get this book. Get the book and read it. If you believe that this is the year of ridiculous, then believe whatever God said he was going to do is going to be done. Don't get upset because your last strategies did not work. Come on, are y'all hearing me? Are y'all hearing me? Come on, are y'all hearing me? Don't be upset because what you try.
tried to do because that's only the trick of the enemy to make you quit. Right. Uh -huh. That's only the trick of the enemy to say it doesn't work. Yeah. We cannot walk into the ridiculous broke. Uh -huh. And I'm not talking about money to buy stuff. I'm talking about favor to pull in the resources. Can't touch money. Is anybody hearing me? Yeah. 